During the blocking phase, we've built our asset thinking about the shapes it's made of, the overall visual balance, and light direction. In the refining phase, we're going to change our tool belt. It's time to focus on the form, the character, and the materials of our asset. We are moving away from our paint structure to give it more personality by shading it. In a sense, as you move forward with your asset, you can start to think at a higher level, back to its concept, to its backstory, and its function in the game. This doesn't mean that you should think hard and with words all the time though. Thinking with pictures, or just letting yourself fall in a state of flow, what we call in the zone, is powerful too. So let us talk a bit about the refining process. First of all, I decide to let colors bleed a bit on neighboring surfaces. I do that with a soft, noisy brush, and it gives us some colors for the Color Smudge Brush Engine to work with, as well as some visual guide to better paint our lighting moving forward. The Color Smudge brushes, those with a pink or a purple thumbnail, sample colors from the canvas and mix them with the colors that you pick in the color picker. Thus, it can be useful to add a few tints here and there that we can afterwards play with. I'm going for a painterly style, thus I will use a painterly brush. I approach the refining phase of a painting a bit like sculpting. Early on, each brush stroke is used to carve into the form. I use a pretty sharp flat brush that allows me to give a lot of character to my strokes. With Krita's Color Smudge Brush Engine, you can add texture to your piece very fast as your strokes both add color and blend naturally with existing colors on the canvas. The base light we added in the blocking serves as a guide to create a more interesting separation between the light and the shadow of our object. We don't want to keep too soft of a gradient, we want to build a material that has a character, that feels like it has lived for a while. Painting with a dry brush like that gives a lot of local contrast to our game set. Now we are starting to focus on the details, which means that we are going to have to play a tough balancing act, until our asset is done pretty much. We have to detail every part of it, but we mustn't lose track of the big picture. This is something we often fail at as artists, and that regardless of our experience. Just like with programming, with music, with writing, we need peer reviews to express our full potential. But we can't always have them. If you are working alone, I recommend that you then work on at least two different assets throughout the day, so that you can bounce between them, and have a relatively fresh look on each asset every time you switch documents. You can already see one of the computer's strengths for painting here. We easily add dry, sharp details on top of a smooth shading. And in the polishing step, we'll be able to do it the other way around. We'll be able to smooth our dry strokes again with the airbrush and blender brushes. At that point, the bottle's body looks more like the cross-section of a potion rather than a full bottle. The dark background behind the liquid suggests that the bottle is fairly opaque and that it blocks light. This makes it easier to paint the asset as we don't have to bother with refraction. The liquid stays visible and I'll be able to layer in highlights at the end of the process to make it look more like a bottle. This is a constraint that keeping elements separate in your document gives you. On one hand, with many layers, you can work on each material and form separately. On the other hand, painting the interaction of two materials together, like glass and anything contained inside of it, is a little harder. For that, there's really nothing like the traditional techniques. So past the refining stage, I often either merge layer groups together or add new layers at the top of the stack to paint the details freely. It depends on the project. With this project though, I didn't do it, and you'll see at the end that despite the presence of highlights, the glass lacks a bit of a blurry quality and inner reflections to look like a full bottle. Let's focus a bit on lighting, as to me this is really the most important part of refining a painting. 
We use lighting to describe our object's form, their color, and their material, so it's really important to think carefully about it. There are three things I want you to pay attention to as they will make the difference between a blonde looking asset and something that feels believable and grounded in its environment. The first one is contact shadow. There is some small, sometimes faint shadow area between two elements that are close to one another. We sometimes call it occlusion shadow as it results from the occlusion of light by two neighboring surfaces. Adding contact shadow enhances the volume of the asset as it grounds it in its environment. The shadow at the bottom, between the bottle and the ground, is the most important one in our case. The second aspect you have to be careful about is bounce light. Light bounces around from one element of the scene to the next. That's why you get that color bleed from one material to another. Light rays capture a bit of the color of the surfaces they hit, and they then get reflected and apply the color the next time they land somewhere. In general, the closer two objects are to one another, and the more light they receive, the more color bleed you get. Again, the highlight between the ground and the bottom of the bottle gives it that much more volume, but you can find a bit of that reflected light from the ground on everything that's facing down. You will be able to see a bit of blue as well on the rope and a bit of brown under the cork. That is all bounce light. And last but not least, I want you to give extra care to your shading around the edges of your elements. There's often some shade around the edges of objects as they turn around in space. That is due to the fact that the form that's facing more or less away from us also reflects light more or less away from us. That light may hit the object, but it doesn't come to our eyes or to our camera's lens. There is no formula to nail that though. If you have a very strong light behind your object, you might get highlights instead of shade. You need to develop a good sense of form and lighting to have a mental model of your object. This is something you learn by painting, observing objects in nature, and looking at reference pictures. And that wraps up the specifics of refining a game asset. Now it's time to move on to polishing.